worship all over the sanctuary. Come on, I don't hear nobody. Let's worship him. Fill up the room with what your heart is full of. If your heart is filled with praise, fill up the room with the sound of praise. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, come on. Come what may you're worthy of glory. Come what may, you're worthy of praise. All we are is glory's reflection. We'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. Come on, say it. Come on, say it. Come with me. Come with me. Come on, lift your hands and say, Come with me. Come with me.
everybody. Everything is my heart, my mind, so belongs to you. Oh, you pay price for me. Way back on Calvary. That's why I don't hear nobody worshiping. Receive this part tonight. Receive this part tonight. Come on, open your mouth and give them a pour. I don't see nobody pouring. You got to pour with your hands. You got to pour with your body. You got to pour with your praise. Come on, just tell them, receive my power tonight, God. 
your blood poured on my sins and I pour my worship on you. Come on. Pour for the poor. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will always worship you. Come on, can we loop that again and say, and I will not be Come on, lift up the worship. Say, I will always I will worship you. Worship you. Come on, inhale and exhale and say, just as long as, as, long as I am breathing. You're not the most What you just said. Open up your mouth and not be silent in this place. Come on, church, open it up wide. Bust the gates of hell with your worship. Bust the gates of hell with your praise. He's a good God. And even if I had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough to tell you thank you. I'm the present God. Elohim, El Shaddai. Yahweh, my will in the middle of the wheel, my burden bearer, my heavy load sharer, my heart fixer, but your name is Jesus, and you have a name that is above every name. Somebody holler Jesus. Somebody holler Jesus. And we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Now somebody clap your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. Not an applause, but a praise. In order for it to be a praise, something got to come out of your mouth. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody pass it down your road and just say, I got a right to praise him. I got a right to, I'm gonna go see out of Ohio. Lean on somebody and tell them I got a right. Show me what you gonna do when God turn that thing around. Show me what you gonna do when breakthrough hits your life. Don't wait till the battle is over, but shout. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. I said open up your mouth and shout. I said shout, shout like it's already done. He prophesied, destroy this temple, and in three days I'ma raise it up. I've never seen a word that he said return back unto me, boy. If you got a word over and over your life, that's enough to give a praise. breaking of day. I feel something shifting. I feel something breaking. We gotta move on. They should have never put Pilgrim together on Easter Sunday. They should have kept us at home. But because we here, we gonna give them a praise. Because we drove, we might as well give him a break. Pass it down your road and shut. I got a right to give him a break. And if you keep messing with me, I'll tear this whole row up. If you keep... Tell somebody we exited out of the fourth quarter. And we entering into the second quarter. 
Get ready to see what you've been praying for. Get ready to see it. We gotta go. You gotta say it till you see it. Now don't play with it. resurrection we thank you right now for resurrecting us and giving us a new way to live we ask you to bless this service we ask you to touch each and every individual every address here God let favor be at home when we go back to our places father we ask you to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings and favor upon your people Pine the spirit of the adversary Pine every warlock, pine every witch doctor, and let the grace of God fill this place. Father, we come before you right now, asking you to take us into the realm of the Holy Ghost, where favor is, and we thank you for doing it right now. Father, we ask you to bless the word on tonight. Let the word transform our mind. Oh, bring down the fire of God, and burn up everything that's not like you. Satan will serve notice on you that we're changing our mind. We thought about giving up, but we're changing our mind. Thought about throwing in the time, but we're changing our mind. Yes! 
thought about going back, but we're changing our mind. And now we bind you. We restrict all your authority and power. Give us that power, Jesus. Give us the power to tread upon scorpions. Power to tread upon snakes. And we thank you right now for giving us the Holy Ghost. Bless everybody here to Jesus. Pull out your blessing on us, God. And we give your name the glory. And we give your name the honor. And we give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody make some noise. And give God praise. Give God praise up in here. Give God glory up in here. Bind together with your praise. Say that we rebuke you by opening up our mouth and giving God the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, Lord Jesus Christ. We're getting ready to read the word of God that is penned out of Isaiah 53 as we read God's most holy word. And the fifth verse says, But he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with every strike, look down your own and say, neighbor, you already healed. So far, the scripture. Come on, stay right there and open up your mouth and give them a praise in the place. If you know you're already healed, come on, open up your mouth and bless them in the sanctuary. Do I have any praisers in the building? Do I have any people in the building that's excited about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Come on, clap your hands and give them a praise in the place. Glory to God. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to welcome you this afternoon to our fifth Sunday Midwest Pilgrim Assemblies. Come on, clap your hands, Pilgrim, all over the building. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we want to give honor, hallelujah, where honor is due on today. We honor our presiding prelim, Archbishop William Hudson III. Come on, our spiritual father. Come on, can you celebrate? And then we want to honor, glory to God, our, also our Midwest Bishop, Bishop Brandon Jacob, the preaching machine. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate him tonight? Amen. Amen. And then we honor our state bishop, Bishop Clarence Brown. Come on and praise God for him on tonight. And to no other than the classy lady herself, our national first lady, Pastor Andrea Hudson. Come on, let's celebrate her tonight. Hallelujah. And to all of our mothers and to our state mothers and to all of our first ladies, we bless you on tonight. To every pastor, to every Episcopal vicar, to every bishop and to every archbishop, we welcome you. Now, can you put your hands together and give God a praise in this place? Come on, I double dare you to open up your mouth and bless them. Come on, we welcome you, hallelujah. We welcome you to give God glory. We welcome you to magnify his name. We welcome you, hallelujah, Lift him up in this place. Come on, are there any praises in there? Are there any praises in the place on tonight? I double dare you to open up your mouth. Oh, come on and give God the glory. Come on, if you feel welcome, open your mouth. Come on and bless him in this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus on tonight. In the, in the words of our spirit, test to one. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the words of Archbishop, I love this church. Do me a favor, before we turn this choir loose, take out your phones, take out your phones. Glory be to God, take out, before it get ugly in here, and let's do a pilgrim service selfie, okay? Take out your phone, take a picture with your neighbor, take a picture with your friend that is sitting next to you. Come on, bust them out, bust them out, bust them out, bust them out. I see you, I see you. Take that picture. Take it, take it, take it and post it to social media, hashtag it, Pilgrim Proud, hashtag it Midwest Crazy, cause we Midwest Crazy, amen. Hashtag it Midwest Crazy, come on Pilgrim Proud, Midwest Crazy, and the third hashtag, hashtag it Road to Holy Convocation, Road to Holy Convocation. 
do that for me and post it on social media, amen. Also, too, while you're there, go to our Pilgrim, is it on our Pilgrim Assembly's national page and share this service. Do some online evangelism, if you will. Share it to those across the world, amen, so that they can experience the ministry of Pilgrim Assembly's international by way of the Midwest region. Amen. Anybody excited to be here on tonight? Anybody excited about Holy Convocation? Amen. And Atlanta, Georgia, July 22nd through 26th is going to be a high time in the Lord. Immediately following the PAI Midwest Regional Music Ministry, you will be in the most capable hands of our Indiana State Prelate, Bishop Christopher Woods. Come on, receive them at this time.
many glad that he made a decision not to save himself, but he made a decision to save me. Tap your neighbor on your shoulder and tell him he made a decision to save me. That neighbor didn't respond too well. Look on the other side and say, neighbor, he made a decision. He didn't have to, but he made a decision to save I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that he decided to save me. Tell somebody, I was a wretch undone. I thank God for Jesus. Anybody thank God for Jesus? Come on, don't fool me. Anybody thank God for Jesus? I'm so glad that he died, but I'm even hippopotamus glad that he got up. Tell somebody, he didn't stay dead. No, no, no. He got up. Come on, tell somebody, he got up, he got up, he got up. with my nasty self, he got up for me. Even when I didn't do everything like I was supposed to, he still got up for me. I think the Bible says, Psalm 107, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Anybody been redeemed in the house? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise in this building. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Good evening, pilgrim. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, we are here today for one purpose. Well, I am here for one purpose, and that is to get some money. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, it's giving time. It's giving time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, we are here in our Midwest Regional Fellowship Service. This is the first time we have been together as a region in one year. Hallelujah. Look around you. Y'all came out on Easter. Y'all ain't helping me in here. Somebody said they wasn't going to come. Look at your neighbor and say, you here? Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm here. Hallelujah. There's a word in the house. And so we want to go ahead and get this out of the way. Listen, we have been charged, all the pastors, all the pastors, please stand. All the pastors of Pilgrim, I want y'all to see. Hallelujah. Don't they look good? Don't they look good? Hallelujah. Remain standing, pastors. I need $200 from every bishop. All right, we can shout, but I need to get this money, too. Amen. Tell somebody to roll the holy convocation. Amen. So I need, I need everybody. I need everybody, all of our pastors and our Episcopal vicars and our bishops. We know what we've been asked to do. Indiana, y'all already know what to do to make sure that you counter for us in that screenshot. Amen. Amen. We tell somebody, we don't play over Indiana. No, no, no. You're going to give it. Hallelujah. Listen, the ways to give are on the screen. Uh, you can give by cash app at dollar sign P-A-I give, or you can give on uh, Zelle, which is give at Pilgrim Assemblies. We also have to my right and to my left the options to swipe. Tell somebody, the excuses of being able to give in God's house is now out the door. Hallelujah. We, listen, we got everything covered, huh? Amen, amen. Matter of fact, if you need to swipe your card, won't you come on and go to my right or your left even now? Because that's the longest part. Y'all come on now. All right, y'all come on now if y'all want to swipe. And our pastors, our pastors and our EVs and our bishops, you already know what you've been asked to give. The 200, the 100, get in line. Your leaders, get in line uh, for your... Uh, for your uh, for your assessment. Amen. 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 And listen, I'm going to challenge everyone else, every, every one of you. I'm going to challenge you to give a $30 seed tonight. So I need everybody to stand on your feet. Everybody, everybody. Y'all didn't spend all your money on your clothes. Get on up. I can see. Yeah. Sheen.com was hot this week. Yeah. Hallelujah. $7.99. Huh? It was hot this week. Uh-huh. Amazon Prime was priming for you. Come on. Everybody stand to your feet with your $30 seed. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand. One of the adjutants will get an envelope for you. Everybody should have something to give unto the Lord. 
It is, we should be past that time of coming into God's house and not having nothing to offer, but always trying to take something out with us. Amen. Some of us done ran out of our credit. Amen. 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 Everybody standing. Everybody standing. If you're able to stand, everybody should be standing. Everybody. 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 I know those from Kingdom First are standing. Praise God. Amen. 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 Stand, stand, stand. Let us pray with your seed in your hand, with your seed, whether you're giving on your phone or electronically or giving cash or, or check. Everybody standing with your, with your seed in your right hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask, God, that you would bless these seeds. Uh, Father, we ask that you would return it unto us, not 10, not 20, not 100, but unlimited gold. Father, for we sow this seed to meet the need. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we do pray. Thank God and amen. Amen. We will be in the hands of the ushers in the ring. face the wall and start from the rear and come around and go up that side aisle. Can y'all do that for me? Go ahead. Turn to the wall. That's it. Start over there. Young man, go ahead and start over there. Yeah, you can start out that way. There you go. Everybody in the middle, please stand. Everybody in the middle, please stand. You're going to face to your right. Starting from the rear. Starting from the rear. Starting from the rear. Father, thank you for the seed. Father, 
we decree and declare that you're multiplying it. Father, we decree that you're going to multiply it by this time. Father, we decree in the next 24 to 48 hours, we are going to see this seed again. Father, we pray that this seed will go forth to do some damage in the kingdom, that it will go forth to do some zero balances for your people. Father, you gave seed to the sower, and Father, because you've done that, you promised to give it back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Y'all put your hands together, receive our PAI Midwest Choir. Immediately following, you will be in the hands of our Illinois State Prelate, Bishop Prince Brown. Let's go. No, sir. Put your hands together for the bishop. Can you clap your hands and give God your best praise? I say, can you clap your hands and give God your best praise? I know sometimes they say it around Christmas, but Jesus is the reason. Look at his name and say, Jesus is the reason. Can you jump to your feet and praise God for J-E-S-U-S? -E now that's real salt for Jesus. King of Kings, El Shaddai, Elohim. Abba Father, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Tiskanu. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus is still the reason. Can you do this for me? Can you clap your hands for our Archbishop, our prelate, our presiding prelate, Archbishop William Hudson III? I say anything else, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and you'll say, grace, mercy. Archbishop, we love you and we thank God for you. Amen. Can we celebrate our national first lady, Pastor Andrea Hudson? <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you, Pastor Lady. Amen to our Midwest Bishop on tonight. <laughs> Come on, I don't hear y'all Midwest. Where y'all at? Y'all got to do better than that for my Midwest bishop. I'm going to come back to him. Thank God for our general secretary, Bishop Cornelius Williams. Amen. Thank God for our state mother, our Midwest mother, our every, everybody, Lottie Dottie. I just been saying that everybody, as Archbishop would say to the pastors, the EVs, amen, to our first lady. Thank God for my lovely wife. She's watching y'all keep her lifted in prayer, not feeling well, but I know God is a healer. Yes. Hallelujah, amen. Thank God for our bishops, all of those that are here that have come from near and far. Um, Illinois, Midwest, all of y'all, Michigan. Well, I, I'm the new state bishop of Illinois, amen. Yes. I thank God for this assignment. I want to say this publicly. We said it with the pastors, but I want to honor Bishop Ed Rocket on the day. Can y'all help me honor Bishop Edward D. Rocket? Amen. I want to say to Bishop Rocket, thank you for your service, serving in the assignment. Thank you. Amen. He over there. I'm going to get him. I'm trying to love on him. Give him my heart. He over there acting up. I want to say I love you, man. Thank you for the assignment. Thank you for passing it along. Thank you for the training, the teaching. Thank you for all you showed me. We love you, man, and we thank God for you. Amen. My assignment is to introduce our speaker on today. This man of God needs no introduction. He is an awesome and anointed man of God. He is my brother. Been knowing him for years now, and uh, it's been an honor to work alongside him, an honor to serve with him. He is a father. Yes, he, is. he is a husband. Yes. Come on, his lady is here. His beautiful lady is here. Lady V is in the house. Executive pastor, Lady V, our Midwest lady. They are the proud parents of five awesomely anointed children. He's getting ready to graduate, y'all. 
May 11th, he'll be graduating with his Masters of Divinity. He is the proud pastor, bishop, and leader of NZT Hammond, NZT Indy, NZT Philly. We're trying to figure out where he's going next. He's a leader like no other. He's a preaching machine. He is the hurricane and the tornado of the Midwest, of the world now, Lord Jesus. He is a pro prolific pontificator that has no problem properly presenting the profundity of the text in order to perpetuate your cerebral perception. My brother, I love you. We thank God for you. Won't you receive on tonight our Midwest Bishop, Bishop Brandon Jacobs. Clap your hands and give God praise. They're going to sing and come, and the next speaking voice you will hear is that of our Midwest Bishop, Bishop Brandon Jacobs. Put your hands together if you're holding on. Come on.
If you believe that, put your hands on it. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, put your hands on it like a sanctified people. all over this place when I was growing up they didn't say it like that they said hold to his hand God's unchanging hand hold to his hand God's unchanging hand you are to Luke, or better yet, I'm sorry, John chapter 20, verse 11 through 18. I am so honored to be here tonight, and I thank God for the Midwest region. Can y'all clap your hands and, ooh, y'all, I want y'all to celebrate yourself. Thank God for the Midwest region. Amen. I want to thank God. I, I haven't heard him celebrate it all night. And I want to celebrate my first assistant tonight, Apostle Cunningham. I love you, sir. Thank God for you. Amen. And to our state bishops, our Episcopal vicars, and everybody in their rightful place. And uh, I know sometimes when we stand in these type of settings, we often hear us honor some of the same people. But it is often because they mean so much to who we are. And I'm saying that to say we would not be who we are and what we are if it had not been for my spiritual father, Archbishop William Hudson III. Can we honor him one more time? Oh, come on, pilgrim. And you can't honor him without honoring Pastor Lady. Come on, we thank God for Pastor Andrea Hudson. Amen. To all of the pastors, all of the first ladies, we honor you. But I gotta give a hot shout out to my queen in the house, Lady V. Amen. I love you, and New Zion is in the house tonight. Everywhere I look, I'm seeing you in the building, and I wanna say thank you. Uh, John chapter 20. 
verse 11 through uh, 18. <clears throat> when you found it signified by saying Jesus. Jesus. The Bible reads like this from the King James Version Bible. It says, but Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. Right. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seeing two angels in white sitting one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. When she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if ye have borne him, hence tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus answered her and said, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to thy brethren and say it unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and to your God. I want to preach from the subject tonight a call to awareness. A call to awareness father have your way tonight lord i'm standing again for you and i pray that you would have your way and speak and let your glory rest in this house like never before and tonight i ask you to do what i ask you every time i stand preach me jesus preach me until your glory shake this house preach me until a revival hit this house preach me until we leave here drunk under the unction I, uh, of the Holy Ghost and we'll thank you for it and we'll count it done in Jesus Christ most holy and gracious name we pray all those in agreement said amen my brothers as I challenge us tonight to a call to awareness I propose to you that the body of Christ needs an awakening I believe the body of Christ needs a shaking. I believe the body of Christ needs a tapping on the shoulder. And as we view our text today, our text is challenging the believer to sobriety. Challenging the believer to awareness and keenness. God has a way of shocking the believer into purpose. I can remember, I don't know about you, but when I grew up in church, you know, uh, church is not like it is today. I'm one of them church boys that grew up in church where we went to church every day. A Monday night was a prayer meeting, but not the normal prayer meeting. It was the type of prayer meeting for those who needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you came on Monday night because you were seeking God for the baptism. And then Tuesday night was choir rehearsal. And then Wednesday night was Bible study. And then Thursday night was corporate prayer service. And then on Friday night was Friday night service or all saints meeting. Uh, that's the night where they had testimony service. Where the saints would get up and testify first, giving honor to God. Who's the head of my life? Bishop, members, and friends. And they, they would testify things like, I've been saved Oh, oh, I, oh, y'all went to the same church I went to. I've been saved all day long, been walking with Jesus. I, I mean, the type of testimony services where they would tell you, you got two choices. Either you sing or you testify, but you can't do both. Because there was always a tricky saint that wanted to show off. And uh, we would have testimony service. And, and then on Friday night, we normally went out and evangelized only to come back to church on Sunday night or Sunday and be in church all 
all day that was my life as a little boy. And, and, and being that we would often hear sermons about the return of God. We would hear sermons about heaven and hell. In an hour when many don't believe that hell exists. Uh, we heard sermons about heaven and hell. And I'll never forget my stepmother waking me up one morning, getting me ready for school. And I had put my clothes on for school and laid across my father's bed, waiting on my stepmother to get ready to take us to school. And my brothers and sisters, she had laid her clothes out on the bed. And after laying her clothes out on the bed, they had forgot to turn off their alarm clock. And you know what happens when you keep hitting snooze every 15 to 20 minutes, the alarm goes off. Here I am laying on the bed, got caught up in a good sleep. While I'm asleep, the trumpet of that alarm goes off. I wake up and I see her clothes laying on the bed and her body was not there. You know I woke up scared, don't you? I thought the Lord had returned. And me thinking that the Lord had returned, it put me in a place of awakening. From that moment, I ran around the house calling on my father, calling on my stepmother, calling, amen, on my brothers and sisters, only for her to run out and say, boy, what's wrong with you? I said, I thought the Lord had came and raptured y'all and left me here. <laughs> when I went to school that day, I went to school with an awareness, with a holy fear because I had thought I had missed the return of God. And I believe that we are living in an hour, amen, where the church has stopped putting themselves in an awareness that the Lord is really on his way back. Uh, we're so rich. We got nice houses. We got pretty cars. We got money in the bank. We are living the life we have always desired to live. And we've gotten so comfortable where we are that we have forgotten that this world is only our passerby. Old church said we're just pilgrims passing by. But my brothers and sisters, instead of, instead of us setting up temples or better yet tents, we have built houses of brick because we don't believe that we have to leave this place. And I believe that the church needs a shocking. The church needs a shaking in this season of theological air on grace and an acceptance on inclusion. We have lost our God consciousness and our awareness of the assignment and our alertness to heaven and even hell. My brothers and sisters, in chase of peace and comfort with our sin, we have sipped the Kool-Aid of carnality and have been wooed into a drunken stupor. This makes me wonder, what are our prophets hearing? Uh, makes me wonder, what is God saying to those who said you have an ear from God? Lord, I wish I had time tonight, but I'm going to plow through here. Just sit a while. I'm coming. Hallelujah. It makes me go back to the prophetic corpus of Jeremiah. When God tells Jeremiah, I'm angry with your priest and I'm upset with your prophets because they are so loved by the people that they only prophesy what the people want to hear. But what they're telling the people is not the word of God. Oh, yeah. It is not what I have said. It is, it is not the word that I have given them. But because we want to scratch the itch, we prefer to scratch the itch instead of telling you that it won't be long. I wish I had a church here. And I come to tell you that God is challenging the body of Christ to a season of sobriety. Hallelujah. Too drunk on who we are. Too drunk on our fame, too drunk amen, on the greatness of our ministries, too drunk on the fact that 20 people joined the church uh, but really haven't come to Christ too drunk on the fact hallelujah, that we got it going
going on and you finally can live in the house you've always wanted to live in. You can finally go get you a beautiful car but haven't realized why we're living in the comforts, amen, of our desires. We have missed that God is on his way back and I come tonight to tell you sober up, sober. I'm in a season with New Zion Temple, amen, where the Lord is challenging me to call the church to sobriety. Sober up, help me preach tonight and just find about three people in your section and tell them sober up, sober up. So come on here. I know they may not like it. Sober up, sober, sober up, sober, sober up, sober, sober up, sober, 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 sober. He's calling us to sober up, sober, sober, so oh my shot. I'm gonna say it till if you don't remember nothing else I preached tonight, you'll remember the preacher telling you to sober up. Sober up, Lord Abosha. And so here's the question of the text Why does God need to bring us into awareness? I'm glad you asked tonight. God calls us to awareness uh, to get our attention. He calls us to awareness because he's trying to wake us. Um, the purpose, my brothers and sisters, of coming to awareness is to bring us back to our senses and to wake us up from that place of being comfortable. God gaining our attention doesn't mean that we are in sin. It could mean we're too deep in solace. Uh, doesn't mean we're in sin which is too deep in peace which is uh, too happy just uh, too peaceful nothing uh, is bothering you just too peaceful this this is not the hour when we're in a political uproar and when bridges are, are, are crumbling and when people are in a state of being lost and the church is at peace as if we could not sense the movement of God and and see what God is doing. And my brothers and sisters, what I dare tell you tonight is to be shaken basically means to be made aware again or it suggests to get back to the place where we are fervent minded, where we are conscious about the next move of God prophet, where we are seeking and asking the Lord, what is next? What are you doing here and this is where we find ourselves in our text and I know on this morning and all weekend long we've been hearing the story and what a beautiful story it is uh, I know that we've been talking about how this whole week that we call Holy Week has been a time of reminding ourselves of the sacrifice of our Christ how he was betrayed on Monday Thursday and Right around about, about Thursday night, amen, he was turned over, hallelujah, to the soldiers and he was marched from judgment hall to judgment hall and by Friday morning, he was whipped, my brothers and sisters, and please understand, it is not the type of whipping that you would consider seeing in a slave movie, no. He was whipped, my brothers and sisters, with a cattail that had teeth with in it that was very long that when they whipped our Christ they didn't just whip him where the whip went on his back but they whipped him until the whip wrapped itself around his body which means when they took the whip off of him they could not pull it off they had to pull it off so in pulling the whip off that was wrapped around his body they had to pull flesh and had to pull tenants and had to pull all type a man off of his body where from one lash he was bleeding if you want a clear picture by the time they whipped him 39 times his guts were just about spilling out of his body whipped him until you could see the bone that was in his body I, uh, but even though we could see the bone according to the psalm they couldn't break a bone. Uh, that's another sermon for another time. They had to leave him together to keep the integrity of the gospel.
full intact. Humble shot. Because if you break a bone, you might mess it up. I, I, can't, I can't do that. Uh, but let's sit here and hear my brothers and sisters after whipping him and the blood is running down the streets of Jerusalem, running up and down the Via Della Rosa. They take our Jesus while he's weak in his body, but he's so focused on his love for us that as they get ready to march him to the place of the skull, they put that heavy cross on his back until a black man had to come and help him carry the cross. They march our Jesus. Oh, bless his name tonight. They march him, amen, to the place of the skull. They march him to Golgotha. They march him to the place we like to call Calvary. They lay him down. They take nine inch nails and they put it in his feet just in case he thought about running. Hand up a shot. Put it in his hands just in case he thought about fighting. But they messed up my brothers and sisters and lifted the cross because he said if I be lifted I'll draw bless him tonight I'll draw men unto me and here my Christ is with a crown of thorns pressed into his brow and blood dripping from his face and blood dripping a man down his legs it is a beautiful story but it is a horror story as our savior is suffering they take my Jesus after he had died all night amen from the sixth to the ninth hour they put him in Joseph's borrowed tomb after putting him in the tomb he had been there three days according to the Jewish custom which really started Friday morning and not Friday night but that's another sermon for another time and my brothers and sisters they take our Christ and now here he is on the third day resting in the tomb but the problem is Mary Magdalene and a few of the apostles or disciples are coming back to the tomb so that they might see our Jesus because you got to understand that they did not embalm bodies like we embalm bodies today that's part of the reason why they would get the body in the ground early so what they would have to do they would have to come rub the body down in myrrh and spices so that the body wouldn't stink in its process of decaying and here is Mary the same Mary that washed his feet with her tears and dried them with her hair the same Mary that broke the alabaster box and built a fragrance in the room she said let's go down to the tomb so that I might rub him down again so that he don't stink of shame from the suffering that he's been through but she gets to the grave and when she gets there the tomb had been rolled away oh, oh, sister girl got a problem here because how is it that uh, the stone is gone and uh, yeah, she peeps into hallelujah the tomb she looks down in there and when she peeps in she don't see Jesus uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but what got me was not just what she didn't see but she missed what she should have seen because though she didn't see Jesus and though she did see the angels what she missed was on one foot of the table was the rag that was on him that was bought up but on the other part of the table at the head was a napkin that was folded oh bless his name here and if you know anything about Jewish custom when they fold the napkin if they're eating dinner it suggests that I'm not done but I'm coming back if they were done eating they would fold the napkin up and throw it down but if they fold it it's a message don't touch this here cuz I'm coming back and here Jesus left her a message don't touch this here yeah cuz I'm coming back Lord, I don't know who I'm preaching to in here, but I feel a breakthrough coming in the room. And I dare you help me preach and look at 
your neighbor. Say, don't get too comfortable because he's coming back. He's coming back. Lord, I wish I had a Holy Ghost church because I know you shout over cars and I know you shout over houses, but can you shout that one day he's going to crack the sky and he's coming? Here, my brothers and sisters, she peeps in, and as uh, she peeps in, and she doesn't see uh, Jesus, and the angels look at her and say, "Woman, uh, what are you looking for?" And uh, she's looking for Jesus and forgot uh, that he told her, "Hallelujah," that he was getting back up again. He, hallelujah, she uh, she forgot uh, what he said, and I thank God and preachers, please. We got to preach it right. We cannot forget that we are talking about, amen, the incarnate Christ. We are talking about Christ who is 100% man and 100% God. It is what we call the hypostatic union. He is God and man all at once. And I'm glad he is because uh, this uh, uh, defies the Gnostics who teach uh, uh, that he didn't have a body. Uh, but I think Thank God, hallelujah to God, that he had one. My brothers and sisters, and here, he let us know, hallelujah, that they didn't kill me. No, 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 no. You can't kill this. Hallelujah to God. They didn't kill me. Yeah, they whipped me a little bit, but you can't kill God. In so much, he says, no man takes my life. But I love you so much. I laid it down. Get the story right. They didn't kill me. I gave it to them. They ain't got enough power to kill me. They ain't got enough weapons to kill me. I'm so God that you can't take my life. I lay it down. He said, not only would I lay it down, but in three days, I'm going to get it back up again. I'm so God that I can put it to sleep and wake it up all at the same time. she comes I, uh, and while she's there I'm moving I promise I won't hold this long and here uh, she is at the tomb and Mary is distraught because she can't find him and when she comes out uh, she starts having a conversation with Jesus but she doesn't know it's him she supposed it is a gardener and Jesus looks at her and says woman uh, why are you crying and what are you looking for uh, she said show me where they laid him and this is important because you understand that they were in a fight here uh, because Pontius Pilate had put it out uh, that Jesus surely said he was going to get up and what he uh, was saying that if he gets up it will be said hallelujah uh, that they took the body uh, so they thought maybe maybe Pontius his pilot and his boys was going to take the body. So when Mary gets there, she's thinking that the body has been stolen. Uh, Mary gets there and Mary is, she's upset. Uh, she's mad. And here she is talking to God. Here she is talking to Jesus and she doesn't know it. She missed it. Walked with him and and missed it I uh, was with him and missed it I ate with him and missed it had rubbed his feet with her tears and hair and missed it how many times have a sanctified folk missed Jesus and he was right in front of us higher with your tongue talking self you so deep you can't see him when he come in the room cause you're expecting him in another package and that's the problem with many of us sometimes he's amongst us but because he's not in the package we want him to be in we miss
miss him when he shows up. Oh, I wonder tonight, have you missed him? Your bash, did you miss him? Because he wasn't big enough or loud enough or spooky enough. Did you miss him? Because he wasn't mystical enough. Oh, but we serve a God who knows how to show up in simplicity. Hallelujah. But because you're so deep, you can't see him when he comes. But Lord, I don't want to miss you. I dare somebody lift your hands and declare, I don't want you to be in my face and I miss you. I don't want you to be around me and I miss you. I don't want to be a deep wonder and I miss you. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost here. You want to look at somebody and say, don't miss him, don't miss him. Don't miss him, don't miss him. Don't miss him, don't miss him. Don't miss him. Don't miss him. Don't here, here she was talking to Jesus and she didn't know he was there full conversation and out of nowhere Jesus says Mary oh bless his name here he don't say wake up he don't say you don't know it's me he just called her name Hi, uh, Mary and in that moment of hearing her name called she snapped out of her stupor and she realized oh my god it's Jesus Hi, uh, oh you missed it rewind let me come back and give it to you again all he did was say Mary Hiya at the Kaya at the Shanda at the call of a name. It shook something in her. It made her wake up. It made her come to. Because when she heard him call, because it's a difference when you hear him call you. Oh, you don't believe me. Axel Lazarus. Lazarus was in the grave, had been dead four days. And Jesus called his name until the whole graveyard shook and had to loose him and let him go. He came out like a mommy when Jesus called his name. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here, but I don't care where you are. I don't care what you got going on. I don't care the struggles in your life. All he got to do is call your name one time. And when he call you, it ought to shake you. When he call you, it ought to pull you out. When he call you, it ought to shake your life. I dare somebody wave your hand and holler. Who knows the power of him calling your name? Somebody open your mouth and shout. He called my name. I got to move on here. But do me a favor. Look at your name in the face and ask him, what is your name? Ask him, what is your name? Did you get that name? When you get that name, take 10 seconds and call him by that name. Because if he call your name, he'll shake you out of drunkenness. He'll shake you out of a high place. He'll shake you out of a coma. He'll shake you out of depression. He'll shake you out of suicide. Oh, y'all so churchy. You can't even call your neighbor's name. But lean on your neighbor and call their name. Because when you call it, he don't shake them out of the hell that the enemy trying to keep them here. Call them by their name. That neighbor didn't hear you. I dare you get the one behind you. Ask him, what is your name? He's calling you. 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 The devil can't have you when he call you. Depression can't have you when he call you. Alcoholism can't have you when he call you. He called my name. If your neighbor don't want to call your name, open your mouth and call your own name. Brandon Jacob, call my name. Call my name. Call my name. moving I promise he calls a name and at the calling of a name she snaps out of it rabbi <laughs> Shia Nabohosha rabbi teacher I didn't know it was you Shadabonda. 
I didn't know you were right here in my face. Uh, he calls her name and awakens her. My brothers and sisters, uh, I come to tell you that God brings us to awareness, not just to get our attention, but God brings us to awareness so that he can get us to a place of, advance, of advancement. Watch the text. I'm moving. I'm going to let the text be my sermon tonight. Uh, yeah. After he calls her name, she's so moved at who Jesus is that the text suggests that the next thing that Jesus says to her is don't touch me. Uh, let's park here. Can we live in the moment? Uh, because when Mary realizes that it is her master, her Lord, and her teacher, uh, the first thing Mary wants to do is grab a hold to him. Uh, she wants to touch him. Uh, she wants to grab him uh, because uh, she wants Jesus not to leave. Uh, she wants him to stay. Uh, Jesus recognizes uh, her desire to grab a hold of him and he backs up and says, hold on Mary, no, uh, you can't touch me. Theologians suggest uh, that Mary's in a place where she is misunderstanding the moment while being in a utopia of happiness because she's trying to keep the Lord that she feels like she has lost for three days and Mary is saying to herself I can't lose you again and Mary tries to grab a hold uh, to Jesus can I park here and just uh, put this in your suit while I'm in your kitchen uh, that is something about a woman who has a relationship with God I, uh, a woman who has a relationship with God knows how to touch God I, uh, and I'm not talking about that freaky talk hallelujah to God I'm talking about in the spirit see I had to come back I, I felt some of you uh -huh. glory to God hallelujah uh -huh. but this is a touch hallelujah uh, that knows how to get God to move I talked about it this morning that many many for many years the church has oppressed the woman and her voice but I thank God for a woman who knows God because I come to tell you yes men know how to pray but it's something about a woman who got a relationship with God where she knows how to get God's attention and God you know and knows how to get God to move on her behalf oh don't you challenge me tonight I ain't even got to walk the mothers of old I can just walk the women in scripture you do remember hallelujah the woman or the widow who had two mites when she gave the offering it was in that moment with Jesus where she touched him until he stopped to see what it was she had going on I already told you how Mary was able to wash his feet with her tears and dry them with her hair and broke the alabaster box until the glory filled the room. But maybe you can't understand them. Oh, but there is a woman I know you can relate with. She had an issue for about 12 years. She was bleeding everywhere. That woman touched Jesus so that she pressed through the crowd she didn't even have to touch his body she just touched the hem of his garment until Jesus paused and said hold up wait a minute somebody touch me you're my shot and I know it wasn't you raggedy disciples cause y'all been touching me all day but this touch made me pause this touch made me stop this touch made me turn around I wonder do I have about a hundred sisters in here that knows the power of your touch where you can lift up your hands and open up your mouth and I dare some of y'all scream right now cause if you scream loud enough you can touch him for your son you can touch him for your daughter you can touch him for your marriage oh some of y'all too cute for me tonight I know it's Easter and you got your cute clothes on but I need somebody who don't care whether you got on a red bottom, whether you got on a black bottom or a cheap bottom, but you said I want to touch him, because if I touch him, I can get him 
to move on my behalf. Somebody open your mouth, lift your hands, and touch him. If you touch him, he'll heal you. If you touch him, you'll get a breakthrough. If you touch him, he'll turn you. If you touch him, he'll shake your life. How did he touch me? And all the joy that floods my soul, something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me. Somebody lift your hands and touch. She said, no, 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 don't touch me, because if you touch me, you'll hinder the assignment. If you touch me, you're going to hinder the advancement. Mary, if you touch me, you're going to stop me from my ascension. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, uh, and I know this is not the initial ascension. I know. Hallelujah for all of my theologians in the room. Uh, I know that his body wasn't in the place uh, to yet be touched by human hands. Uh, but if you study the text deeper, you will understand that her heart's desire wasn't to touch him to touch a wound. Uh, her heart's desire was to grab a hold of him so that he would stay. But Jesus says, if you touch me, until I stay I could never release the promise that I told you about before I told you I was leaving you can't hold on to me because I'm trying to push you to another level you can't hold on to me because my death is an announcement of a shift you can't hold on to me because my death is to get you to the place where you need to go but if you hold on to me you're going to stop uh, the advancement uh, that I'm trying to get in your life uh, Lord I'm moving here because I hear my train calling uh, uh, but before I move I dare you just push somebody and say neighbor this is not the season to be stagnant in emotionalism uh, this is not the season to hold on to stuff uh, but tell them neighbor this is the season uh, where God says I know some things have died uh, I know know some people have left I know you're in a painful season but God said let that thing go because I call some things to happen because I'm trying to advance you to another place in my glory Lord if you know I'm preaching to you tonight I dare you get real raggedy and just push your neighbor a little bit say neighbor quit holding on to stuff that God's trying to deliver you from you trying to hold on to it and God's trying to advance you. You're trying to hold on to it. And God's trying to push you to another place. Cry your tears and dry them. Because there's another level calling you. Lord, if I'm preaching to you tonight, I dare you open up your mouth and give God a shout. Because you can hear another level calling you. You can hear another place calling you. You can hear another dimension calling you. And God says, if you won't hold on to the past, I'm going to release to you the future. If you don't hold on to the past, I'm going to release to you the next place. If you don't hold on to the past, I'm going to release to you a glory that's getting ready to blow your mind. If you're ready to move forward, open your mouth and lift your hands and shout like you can feel the... Like you can feel him pushing you to the next place in him. And him and brothers and sisters, not only do we see him getting Mary's attention, not only do we see him pushing her to advancement, but then we see the release of assignment. God calls us to awareness because God is releasing assignment. God calls us to awareness. Because God is
is releasing a Simon. Here Mary is. And Mary is now understanding. Hallelujah. That her advancement is here. And as we look at the whole scene of the text. Jesus was here with Mary. And as he's here. He begins to release to her. What her next assignment is. He says Mary you can't hold on to me. Because I'm getting ready to push you into a place. You can't hold on to me because I'm getting ready to call you to a greater assignment. He says, Mary, the assignment I'm calling you to is to release the message that what they thought they did to me was not done. I cannot talk back to my sisters tonight. And I promise you, Christian, we're going to get out of here. I promise. I swear. I promise. Hallelujah to God. But if you look at the text, the text would give us this understanding that the first person to preach the gospel message, it was not Peter. It was not James. It was not John. It was not one of the male apostles. But the, I die, Shabu, but the first person to preach the gospel message was a woman who used to be a street woman. Y'all don't want to have my kind of church. I, uh, used to be out there. Uh -huh, you understand. Uh, he told Mary. He said, Mary, you can't hold on to me. But I'm getting ready to release unto you the assignment. He said, go tell my brethren. Go tell uh, the apostles. Go tell the disciples that I have risen just like I said I would. I come to preach to a sister girl tonight. And I come to tell you, I don't care what man has tried to hold you down with the misunderstanding of the text. We see Jesus here releasing the gospel message to a woman who folks wouldn't qualify to preach. And don't you tell me that a woman can't preach the gospel when it was the woman who held it in her belly. It was Mary who held Jesus in her belly for nine months and Jesus is the word it is John who told us in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God jump down to verse 14 and that word became flesh and dwelt among us I dare you look at a sister next to you and tell him girl you got something in you and tell her you got so much in you that the Lord is calling you to take what's in you so that the world can hear the message I don't know tonight who I'm preaching to but I need you to do me a favor and look at your neighbor and say oh neighbor you got an assignment that the Lord has put on your life and tell them whatever you do don't let your right now hinder you because the Lord is pushing you to another place in him y'all don't want to have my kind of church but please do me a favor and grab your neighbor grab your neighbor grab your neighbor by the hand and say oh neighbor I'm grabbing your hand because the Lord is pulling you into greater assignment if you believe that tonight go ahead and yank that neighbor because when you yank that neighbor you're yanking them into a new place in God when you yank that neighbor you're yanking them into another place of glory because the Lord is releasing another assignment on the life of your neighbor if you know God's getting ready to do it I need you to wave your hand and to give God praise tonight because God 
around. He's getting ready to move you to another level in here. You've been stuck in the past. You've been stuck in stagnation. You've been trying to figure things out. But the Lord has sent me back here tonight to shake you out of your stupor, to shake you out of your place of comfort, to shake you out of the place where the enemy has been trying to keep you bound and to tell you that you gotta come higher because there's a work that you must do. I got a close. I got a close. I got a close. But before I close tonight, I can hear Jesus in my ear saying, I must work the work of Him who has sent me while it is day. For when night cometh, no man can work. And I come to tell you, pilgrim, evening time is upon us. And the Lord is calling you to do the work that's upon your life. Please grab your neighbor and go to shaking them and say, neighbor, I'm shaking you because it's time to wake up. I'm shaking you because you've been stuck in a low place. I'm shaking you because the enemy got you back. Y'all ain't shaking nobody. Shake your neighbor until you shake them loose and tell them, come on, neighbor. God said, come higher. God said, come to glory. God said, get your assignment. You've been stuck in the back. But I'm pulling your hand because the Lord is pulling you to a place in glory. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight, but I feel, I feel the glory of God on my life tonight. And I stop by to tell you, he's pulling you high. He's pulling you higher. 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 If you know you're going there, I dare you go to leaping like you can feel the oil. I dare you go to leaping like you can feel the anointing. I dare you go to leaping like you can sense God getting ready to move us to a place of glory. Can I prophesy tonight? There's a glory that's coming on your churches where you won't be able to minister, but breakthrough gonna happen, healing gonna happen, deliverance gonna happen, tumors gonna dry up, folks gonna get saved again. You better get ready cause the Lord is getting ready to breathe a fire like you ain't never seen. Do you hear me tonight? You better get ready, pilgrim, because God, he's getting ready to bring you into a wave of glory where you can testify. Eyes have not seen and ears haven't heard what God, he's getting ready, he's getting ready, he's getting ready to do in your life. If you know God's going to do it, wave your hand and tell God I'm ready. I'm ready for the glory. I'm ready for the power. I'm ready for the strength. Of, I didn't been through hell and now I'm ready for it. I didn't been through pain and now I'm ready for it. They done dogged me out and now I'm ready for glory. Ran my name in the mud and now I'm ready for glory. I didn't cry all night long trying to figure out what is God going to do next. And now here I am 
with my hand lifted. Say, yes, Lord, I'll do what you say. Yes, Lord, I'll do my assignment. Yes, Lord, I'll go where you said go. Yes, Lord, I'll touch who you say touch. You only got a yes, Lord. Wave your hand and tell God yes. I feel something breaking. I feel something moving. I feel God breathing. Do me a favor tonight and get you a neighbor. You don't mind touching and telling, come on, neighbor. I come to get your yes. I come to grab your yes. I come to pull you until the real yes come out of your belly. Y'all so churchy. You can't even do it. Grab your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, I need you to tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Tell God yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him yes. Tell God yes. I can't hear you, pilgrim. Open your mouth. Wave your hand and tell God yes. Because if you tell him yes, he going to give you a breakthrough. If you tell God yes, he going to increase your ministry. If you tell God yes, he going to give you what you've been praying for. If you tell God yes, he going to move the mountain. He going to increase the budget. He going to draw in the souls. You are one yes away. Won't God do it? Ain't God able? Anybody know God will? Anybody know God will? Anybody know God will? Anybody know God will? Anybody Anybody know God will? Anybody know God will? Shout yeah! Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Won't he do it? I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't let y'all. This for me now. Won't he do it? Won't God do it? Yeah! Won't he do it? Grab your neighbor by the hand and just go back and shout because there's a release of glory. Throw your head back. Shout. 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 Touchy, touchy. Philly, Philly type of preacher. You gotta excuse me. But get somebody you really trust. Can, hold on, Christian, I'm coming back for you. Let's not be religious. But I really believe tonight that we can really go home with a release from God on Resurrection Sunday. I believe that. You got that neighbor you trust? You may have to move. Look at your neighbor and say, no, no offense. 
I know you, but not like that. Get somebody to trust. Get somebody you feel like cares about you. Get them by the hand. Hear the text clear. Jesus had to shake her twice. First he shook her by calling her name. And then he shook her by saying, don't touch me. Because what's next is deeper than this. But there's a glory I'm trying to release to you. That if you don't wake up out of this, Mary, you're going to look back five years and be right here at an experience. At one touch. When Mary, you're only experiencing the outward. When if you don't let me go, you'll never get the inward. There's still an upper room. I want to talk to somebody tonight and tell you we've been stuck at a good experience. God says, I got more for you than this. Woo! <laughs> I wish you believed that tonight. You're the most shy. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, God got more for us than this. God got, it got to be more. Woo! It got to be more. I wish I had a church. It got to be more. This ain't it. It got to be more. Don't get stuck here. Don't build three tabernacles. Don't get stuck here. There's more souls. Because I made you a promise. These works I've done. Greater works. And you so in love with this moment, I can't get you to the greater. But you're holding the hand of somebody that God's getting ready to take to the greater. Oh, come on. Grab that hand tonight. Come on, grab it. Grab it and say, neighbor, it's a setup that you're here tonight. God brought you here tonight because he's getting ready to push you to a greater place in him. He's getting ready to release a greater wave of glory. He's getting ready to blow your mind greater than what you can ever imagine. And if you believe that tonight, I want you to open up your mouth and squeeze that hand and give God a shout because there's a release of glory. Come on, pilgrim. Go after God. Go after God. Go after God. Go after God. Yamamusha. You're leaving here with a greater anointing. You're leaving here with a greater power. All in the balcony. All in the back of the church. That's another wave here. That's another power here. That's another strength here. Get your next. Get your next. Get your next. Get your next. I feel the anointing. Oh, come on, church. Oh, come on, church. Get your life back. 
wouldn't have had me get. I'm, I'm all right. I'm not my. Come on, lady, come in here. Get behind him. 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 Because that's a wind behind you. That's a push behind you. That's a way to glory behind you.
Listen. I know. I know some of us. We just like church. But God said tonight is different for you. Did you let that neighbor go that I had you holding that stick, holding that hand you know? Did you let him go? She said, Yeah, I let him go, Bishop. Go back and get him and say, neighbor, this dance is for the future I don't even understand. What? It's for the next. I don't even understand. I don't even understand how God gonna do this. But I know God gonna do it.
praise him in the back of the church. Lift your voice. Your row is waiting on you to open your mouth and shout. Your row is waiting on it. Your future is waiting on it. Your destiny is waiting on it. Your next place is waiting on it. Out of your belly, shout! Breakthroughs happening all the way in the back of the church without the music. I dare you just clap real fast. I dare you. Come on, let me hear it. All in the balcony. Come on. Put your hands on this. There's a fresh wind. And now let the weak say I and strong. Let, Let the poor say I am rich. Because of what? Because of what I know the Lord has done for us. For us. And now, and now, let the weak say, the weak say, say I am strong. I am strong. Let the poor Because of what the Lord has done for us, for us, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Listen, shh. I want to challenge what I hear in my spirit. There's three levels of giving. The first level is not just for pastors. But if somebody tonight, you heard God call your name. 
The first level of giving is going to be 120. But I hear the Lord saying, God is getting ready to cause order. And he's getting ready to unlock some things. I want those of you, if Arch don't mind tonight, I want you to join me on this stage. Those sowing 120. The next level, I know it's really close, but it's what I hear in my spirit. The next level is 90. God's getting ready to do some birthing. Those who are 90, I want you to bum rush the altar. And the rest of you are sowing no less than 25. And I want you to stand wherever you are. Right now, those who are sowing, begin to move right now. Do you know what level you're on? Begin to move. Those who are 120 is going to join me on the stage. Those sowing 90 is going to meet me at the altar. Those sowing 25, I want you to stand where you are. Begin to move right now. Everybody in this house is sowing. By faith. By faith. By faith. Everybody's sowing. Everybody's sowing. If you're watching online, you say, Bishop, I'm sowing with you. Oh, Bishop, we gave already. You got to know the season you're in. As often as I give, as often as I plan to reap, I'm believing God to do it fast, quick. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Those sowing 90, I want you to meet me at the altar. Just come to the altar. Those sowing 25, stand where you are. We're moving quickly. We're moving quickly. Lord, I will always love you. I love you. You love I'm not going to bite y'all. Just come close. I'm not going to bite you. The balcony sewing. Meet me. Meet me. Get out your seat and meet me. Meet me. Somebody sewing for your business tonight. Somebody sewing for your home. So in the cash app, it is P A dollar sign P A I give. Those sewing on the website is pilgrimai.org. Those giving through Zelle, it is give at pilgrimassemblies.org. Everybody, find if you're not at the altar, if you're not on the stage, you're standing. You're standing with your seed in your hand. You're standing even in the balcony. If you're not at the altar, you're standing. With your seed in your hand. I don't know how many is watching us online tonight, but I challenge you. If you're giving with us tonight, say, Bishop, I'm giving with you tonight. I'm giving with you tonight. I'm giving with you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you. I love you. right hand lift it high I won't tell you to sow something I'm not sowing we're sowing 240 tonight lift it from me baby lift it from me you got it. help me say this tonight this is my big season it's my big year big doors big contracts big agreements God's doing it for me in a big way Oh, I wish you would open your mouth and declare that. God's doing it for me in a big way. If you believe that, I dare you open your mouth and shout like you really believe that. Yeah. He's doing it for me in a big way. I declare that your release is in this room, that your favor is in this room, your next level is in this room. If you believe it, give it praise. Begin to sow right now. I don't care how you're sowing. I dare you come to the altar. I believe at the altar, alteration happens. So even if you're sowing five dollars, two dollars, five cents, bring it to the altar. Wave it across the altar. Oh yes.
What a time, what a time, what a time we have had on Resurrection Sunday night. Put your hands together for my son, the preaching machine. Come on, Bishop Brandon Jacobs. Did God use him tonight? Y'all ain't loud enough. I said God used the man of God. Hallelujah. We're going to hold on to what we receive tonight. We're not going to lose it. We're not going to let it go. I am so proud of Bishop Brandon Jacobs and the entire Midwest region of Pilgrim Assemblies International. This place is filled, all of those in the balcony. Y'all make some noise. Some of them have left, but they were in the balcony. Let me hear y'all balcony. There's some still up there. Come listen to the balcony. You hear me. We have had a time in the Holy Ghost. I want to thank God for all of these pastors. Pastor Michael Henderson, would y'all help me celebrate him? Please stand if you're still in the room. You could have went to a lot of churches. Pastor Timothy Lee is in the house. My God bless you, man. My prophet, Prophet Edgar Aaron. Y'all make some noise. Pastor Adrian Jones is here. Pastor McKinnis. Amen. First lady. Um, let's see, Pastor Antoine Williams is in the house. All pastors, I may have missed your name, but would you stand if you're a senior pastor, you're a guest, you're not in Pilgrim, but you're a senior pastor. I want to acknowledge you and celebrate you. I don't want to miss anybody. I want to thank God for one of our newest pastors, Pastor Ladina Franklin, new to Pilgrim. We will be installing her April 21st. Don't y'all miss it. It's going to be off the chain for the glory of God. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. Ain't nothing else to do. Holy Ghost has moved. Power of God is here. Some of y'all had 17 services. And we thank you. New Zion Temple, thank y'all for standing behind your bishop. I love the way y'all support him. I saw that coach bus outside. I like that kind of carrying on. That's what I do. Amen. And that's your bus out there, right? That's your bus. Huh? Costs a lot of money to rent a coach bus. They don't know, but I know. It costs a lot of money. I want y'all to clap for good leadership. They came all the way from Indianapolis, Indiana. Bishop Woods. All those. Come on, on the coach bus. As a pastor, you have to help your people get there. If you want them to make a sacrifice, you have to sacrifice and help the people get there. Look at this whole first row. They think I'm going to carry on. I'm going to go. Stand up. It's to the first ladies. They think they know me. We going home. Amen. My general secretary, I love you. My bishop of Illinois, Bishop Clarence Brown, my bishop. Amen. My Midwest regional, Bishop Brandon Jacobs. I submit to them. This is his service. I'm here for his service. And to the assistant, Apostle Cunningham, and all of you, amen. Yes. Now, those that travel from out of town, I want to celebrate you. Bishop Woods is so faithful. Come on, y'all. Make some noise. On Resurrection Sunday, it takes a lot to leave your family. Bishop Ed Rocket, I love you, son. And his wife, they drove all the way from Michigan. Who else is from out of town, out of town? Come on here, Joliet. Where y'all at, Joliet? Joliet, y'all always here. Your daddy asked me, how's he doing? I said, he's doing great. One of my biggest supporters. He left the church in good hands. Make a mad, Joliet. Let me know y'all here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Any other pastors in Pilgrim from out of town? Oh, my God. That's the Sybil Mitchell. That's you. Get on up here, Iowa. Come on, they don't know you. Just This is Pastor LaCibble Mitchell, all the way from Iowa. She is quiet behind the scenes, but she is a faithful leader and a faithful pastor in Pilgrim Assemblies. Y'all make some noise. Amen. All right, I love y'all. The musicians have been to 29 services. We've been to 17. But y'all got all them checks, so smile. Thank you, Lord. God is good. We just came to praise him. Y'all got checks. Thank you, Lord. All right, I'm going home first, ladies. I love y'all. To all of the children, if you're 18 and under, make some noise. 
that's a blessing. It's a blessing. Casherelle is here. Bless you, baby. All the way from, where's she from? New York, I thought. Maryland, amen. John is here from Pennsylvania. They drove all the way. So, Bishop, we just want to come and be with you on Sunday. Isn't that something? I want to I want to recognize our host church. Ah, oh, Bishop, come on. You're still here. I, did, I forgot. B Pastor T Episcopal Vicar Terrell Edwards. Come here. You've been hiding. You and your amazing church. Can we thank God for Grace City tonight? Amen. I know you're working, but I just want to say, Grace City, we love you. celebrate the pastor of the Apostolic Pentecostal Church of Morgan Park, the one and only Pastor Bill Ellis. Y'all ain't loud enough. They allowed us to rent this place, this beautiful place. Thank you, Pastor Bill. We honor you and we celebrate you. Pastor Liz, Liz Sibyl, she is so quiet. Look, she tried to run away. Amen. I want you to pray us out, Pastor. Amen. We love you. Now y'all get some sleep. Y'all got to go to work tomorrow. Yeah. All right. I'm looking for everybody in Holy Convocation, Atlanta, Georgia. Now, that Monday, we start that Monday. What's that Monday's date? The 22nd. We start out with a banquet. I need y'all to show up. I need you to show up. We're starting out with a banquet. It'll be honoring the leaders in Pilgrim. Every pastor should be there. Every first lady. Every person. I think the tickets are going to be $100. It's going to be at the Westin. We've never had a banquet before. So we start out Monday night with our banquet. First service is Tuesday night. That's my night. I'm going to preach Tuesday night. And I want y'all to come out like roaches. Don't wait till Friday. Your leader's night is Tuesday. Amen. I'm a star. Praise him. So yeah. Amen. Tuesday night. And then we're having classes Wednesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Master classes. And then sessions, 12 noon service, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night at 7.30 p.m. We're going to the Dream Center with Bishop William. William Murphy. They have been so kind to us, and we are excited to go to Atlanta. Now, I heard they got tickets at the Southwest for real Holy Ghost deals. Get your ticket now. Amen. How much was it? Huh? Frontier. That's, what is it? L Amen. I don't fly that. Frontier Airlines. I'm up in God, you understand? And I ain't coming down, but get your ticket. How? Oh, Lord. Get your ticket. Amen. Get the train. It's a choo-choo train going to Atlanta. Find it. The Amtrak. The bus. The cars, the Airbnb, the hotel, whatever you got to do, press your way. Every pastor should be in all their convocation. Let me tell me, no, you got to preach. Cancel it. You don't preach during convocation week. You cancel. Don't tell me about no family trip. Convocation. You can't lead and you don't come to nothing. People are not going to follow you and you never show up. Line and excuses. I run a tight ship, amen? Can't be in leadership and you don't support. So I'm looking for everyone. Where we going? Amen. What month is this? No, what month is it now? It's oh, still March? You got April, May, June. You got three months, amen? July. How many of y'all got your ticket already? Already. Where y'all at? What, where y'all tickets at? Y'all ain't got them yet? Uh -oh. I thought we could stay to 10. Uh -oh, right. What time we got to be out to rent? What is it? We got 210. You want to shout again? All right, Pastor Civil, she's about to fall out up here. Lift your hand, she's going to pray for us. Amen. We 
we thank God for our Archbishop William Huston III and Lady Andrea Huston and all of the saints of God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight, God, for the word of the Lord that has gone forth. Thank you for blessing us to be in the house of God on tonight and carrying us across the highways and the hedges. And we just ask that you will cover us as we go back to our homes. God, we thank you for the blessings of the Lord that are yet to come. And we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. Hug somebody you don't know. Wave at somebody. Shake hands. It's Pilgrim Assembly.